Okay, we've been through all of the two-class classification techniques. Let's take a look at some multi-class approaches. In order to do that, let's pick a column we can work with. Uh, region has four values, if I recall. Yeah. So let's... Let's say we uh, wanted to predict region for some reason. So let's make that our label attribute. So I'm going to go back to train model and change the column that we are predicting to region. Save that. Like everything else we can, uh, um, we don't need the apply math operation anymore. All right, so let's say we want to uh, use one of our one versus one or one versus all multi-class. So let me try a multi-class. Yeah, so here's one versus all. There are no parameters to set because this is a pill that requires me to tell it which two class algorithm I'd like to use. So let's see. We've got a multi-class neural network. So let's try a two class neural network. In general, it would probably be more likely to use one of the two-class techniques that doesn't already have a multi-class version. But this will give us a good way to uh, just sort of see how it works. All right, so we go with two-class neural network. Stick with the... defaults. Add our random number seed and submit the job. All right, we're wrapping up this job and we will preview our scored data set and preview our evaluation results. So for our scored data sets, we are going to see we've got a scored label where they predict which region it will be. And then we can also see the probabilities of it being each region uh, as well. So there's a, basically a probability for each particular region, and then whichever one has the highest score is the one that it selects. So in this case, none of the probabilities were more than um, 50%, but because Southeast had the highest probability, uh, that was chosen as the scored label. All right. Let's take a look at the evaluation results. So in this case, in a multi, multi-class, we get a much less rich evaluation panel with just an overall accuracy, which you can see is not all that great, 0.32. Uh, of course, I don't think region was uh, meant to be a label. We just used it that way. And then we've got some precision and recall scores at the micro and macro level. See, we can use those to calculate an F1 score for the model, which would be a reasonable you know, model performance score that we could uh, use. All right, so that is our... multi-class 
for one versus all multi-class using the two-class neural network. Let's go back and switch that to the multi-class neural network and see how that compares. And we can stick with the defaults, submit the job, and see what it comes up with. All right, we can bring open our score model data set and our evaluate model. We'll take a look at the results. And you can see we get similar results with, uh, in, if I recall, the probability for Southeast is even lower here than it was before. So the multi-class does take a slightly different approach to the one versus one and one versus all multi-class. Uh, overall accuracy, 0.32, and then we have our micro and macro precision and recall values, which uh, look, uh, at least on the macro recall, a little bit, bit higher than it was uh, before. So anyway, that's a run through of different ways to use multi-class approaches using either the dedicated multi-class techniques uh, the one versus one or the one versus all. So we did not see the one versus one, but uh, you would set that up in the same way you would set up the one versus all. If you do have a multi-class problem, it may be worth, even if you have a multi-class version of uh, an algorithm, it may be worth running uh, the one versus all and one versus one versions of that algorithm as well, just to see how they compare.